Hello. Happy Saturday. Sip and draw. Let me get this party started. Um, here we go. Oh, hello. We got some people already. Marcus announcement. Okay. Cool. Cool, cool. Let's make sure I have comments. Um, oh, good, I do. Yes, hello. Hello, hello. Um, woo. I finally, so I know I've made some complaints during the week, for those of you that are here during the week, that um, on, not on my app, but on my PC, Facebook did an update, but it was like a beta it's like a test. It was awful. So I finally figured out how to turn that off. So it's like, oh, so much better. I'm glad I finally did that. Thank you, Kirsa. I um, I showered. <laughs> yeah, you know, this is like, this is what happens when you shower and you actually like blow your hair dry. Like, it's like I'm living in 2019 what it's like um so welcome to sip and draw um we are doing a peacock tonight um we've been doing kind of um themes all week of various things that i saw while i was on my little vacation and a peacock i wanted to do a peacock the week we were doing all the things that fly but um it was fourth of july so we didn't so we're doing one um tonight so that's tonight and then just a quick heads up for next Saturday um, we have partnered up again um, with a company um, Hemley Cider if you haven't had Hemley it's amazing um, the first time I ever had it my girlfriend um, ordered a glass of um, the jalapeno pear and I said to her really <laughs> Like, I love spice. Well, I like spicy, but I don't like things super spicy. And the thought of drinking jalapeno pear, it just literally sounded like heartburn in a glass. It is so tasty. Oh, my God. It's so good. Perfect. Like, you smell it, and you smell the jalapeno, and then you taste it, and it's like heaven. So, you'll love it. Um, so, yeah, that case is pretty cool they're giving you um it's 12 total bottles of cider and then pears from their orchard so it's like a mixed case of cider and actual pears um and then i think they're throwing postcards or something in there too but um, make sure you get your orders in um that's like the only announcements i really have i think after next week the schedule is going to change again um, so stay tuned for that. I'm still making decisions on how that's going to work, but, um, next, after next week, expect probably next week, expect some schedule change announcements. That's all. What's everyone drinking tonight? Welcome friends. Um, I am drinking sparkling rosé and, um, I've already had two glasses, so strap in folks because it's gonna get crazy or I'm gonna fall asleep and so I have sparkling rosé and I put gummy bears in the bottom so when I finish it I get to eat the gummy bears and just in case you were worried about that I only put reds and whites because I'm classy so let me flip you around and show you what we're drawing I didn't color it. I just drew it. We'll color it tonight. Ooh, vanilla porter. Yummy. So here we go. Here's our peacock. Kind of did something a little different. Um, we did something similar with the whale we drew. Um where in the waves we did these like patterns but I didn't want to do just like your typical peacock with all the feathers I wanted to make it 
a little bit more um, geometrically kind of interesting. Um, and I mean, it, let's be honest, it actually makes it a little bit easier this way than doing all the full peacock feathers. But you know, if you don't dig it and you want to do actual feathers and make it more um, realistic, you are more than welcome to do that. I've got my guy kind of standing on a little like log thing here. Um, and yes, tonight uh, I will actually color it, but um, I just drew it. I drew it like an hour ago. So pretty cool. And I'm using my um, watercolor paper tonight. So I'm going to do my watercolor pens on this because I thought it was kind of, I don't know, the kind of drawing it was. It kind of looked like something that would look pretty with the watercolor markers. So let me um, put this aside. Okay, so uh, I, we're going to have a quiz, uh, not a quiz, uh, um, trivia. Sorry, I couldn't, couldn't think of the word. So we are going to do trivia tonight. So as um, always, the way that trivia works, get yourself a piece of paper, write your answers down. There will be 10 total questions. Um, write your answers down and then, um, I will give the answer somewhere towards the end of the evening and then we will, um, see who has the most right. So don't type your answers out in the chat, write them down on a separate piece of paper, please. So that way you're not giving the answers away. All right, so, and it is, um, you know, we're drawing a bird, so it's bird trivia. You're going to know everything you wanted to know about birds tonight. Okay, so let's get started. So to begin with, I'm going to draw an oval on my paper. Sorry, I'm really bumping the camera tonight. That's what happens when you start drinking early. And then from this oval on the back side, I'm going to bring a line that curves down and out. I don't like that. I want it to curve a little bit more like that. There we go. That's better. And then from this front side, I'm going to do the same thing, a line that comes in, down, kind of out, and back around. So we're basically breaking this peacock up into shapes. Now, once you get um, these on here, if you feel like you have weird flow, like I'm definitely going to take this line right here and just cut it. I want the head a little bit narrower right here. So see all this top portion? I'm going to actually end up erasing that. And I might do the same right here, just cut this a little bit. Breaking down those shapes kind of gives you a good starting point and then you can like make your little adjustments to make it more within the sizes that you want. So I'm also like, I cut it right here. So like this line is gonna go away, this line down here at the bottom. And of course, this line inside the head will go away, but I'll do that later. Now off the front, I'm gonna put a beak. So I'm just going to curve a line out and then bring it back in. 
So it's kind of triangular, but I don't want it too pointy down here at the end. I'm rounding that off. And from the beak, I'm going to form the shape around the eye. So I'm just going to kind of continue this line inside the face, bring it to a point, and then back down and connect to the lower part of the beak. I have to push differently on this paper because I think my lines were looking pretty light for you guys to see. And I'll just put a little oval in here for the eye. And then on the top of the head, I'm going to do five little like head feathers. So for now, I'm just going to do lines. They're all going to start off at the same point. Put one more right here. And on the end of each of these, you can either do kind of a teardrop shape, or you can do more of like a leaf shape where you're coming to a point and a point. So see like the difference there, like this one's more rounded and this one kind of has the point at the top and the point at the bottom. So you can kind of just decide which one of those you like better or you can even alternate them. I'm gonna erase this line that I, my little mistake line. And then in this shape, I'm gonna have this be a sharp point and I'm gonna curve up inside the bird and connect it down here. So I end up creating this kind of open space within the bird. So let's give you your first uh, little trivia question. Remember, write your answers down. Don't call them out in group. So what species of bird has a bill longer than its body. So its bill is longer than its body. What type of bird? This is gonna be another one of those nights where it's gonna be a little bit more difficult because I'm sure, I don't know, maybe we do have some like real bird experts in here, who knows? So now is where we have some fun with the tail. And, and I made my bird a little bit bigger tonight, so I don't have tons of room. But the thing with this is, like here where I did it originally, and you can see, it's just a little bit bigger. It's coming a little bit more down. But you could really have the tail swooping forward on your page here. So you don't have to pack all of these little feather shapes into this space, you can have them flowing kind of f across your page. So the first one that I'm gonna do is this kind of giant teardrop inside, and I'm really gonna use this space. I might adjust this just a little bit and make that a little bit more narrow. I didn't want my teardrop to be as wide. I'd rather have my body be a little bit wider. So I'm gonna have this teardrop really curving forward. So I'm gonna start with that. So I'm gonna start at the point and then I'm just going to come up into the space
just like that. And you want just enough room, you know, so you just have some room between where this teardrop is and the bird begins. And you can see I'm making little adjustment lines to my bird as I feel like I need them for the flow. And now it's all just about building other teardrops off of this. So I'm going to have one that maybe comes a little bit right here. They also don't all have to follow, you know, point to round. They can be round to point. So they don't all have to follow the exact same shape, you know, or direction. Some of the points will be up and the roundness will be down. Some of them, the round part will be at the top and the point will be at the bottom. Let's do one that kind of curves back this way. Oh, I went off my page. Let's try that again. So see how you just kind of do them and just kind of fit the flow. I can put one in between here. Some are bigger, some are smaller. I'm gonna put one right here. Now I am gonna put two right here that kind of almost end up being the legs. So I'm gonna make these really curved forward and I'm just gonna stack them. One on top of the other. So then you end up with two kind of feet I'm gonna put one this way. The fun thing about when you do these like geometric drawings is they actually end up looking very elegant, I think, and you can't really mess them up. So, and you can see me over here still adjusting my bird. <laughs> But yeah, you just can't, um, you know, you can't put too few or too many of those feathers. Um, you could even do other shapes in these. They don't all have to be this like teardrop shape. You could do some little dots inside of there. Um, but some of the pattern will be in the actual teardrops themselves. Like that, I'm gonna put one kind of coming up this way. i make that one a little bit bigger. So see, I'm gonna flow more of them this way than having them come back, but I will still do some back in this area. But I'm just gonna kind of really fill this bottom portion of the page. To turn my paper and do kind of a little row of smaller ones here in the middle. Let's put one more right here. There we go. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Let's 
let's do kind of a bigger one here. And then one in here. one more right here then that's going to be it for me yeah I think I like that and then for I wanted something underneath the peacock's legs so I just did kind of this triangular shape um, it doesn't have to be it doesn't even have to be there if you don't like it but um I'm just doing kind of drawing a triangle and I'm hopping the leg, finishing the line, hopping it again, finishing. And then I'm gonna come this way, that, hop it, that, hop. My dog is going nuts. Everybody else is outside except for me dog doesn't like that too much so I want one more right in here there I think that's it now of course this line inside the peacock's head that's going to go away um, I'm just cleaning up some of these little funky lines so I can kind of see the shape of what I'm doing. There we go. All right, there's my peacock. Cheers, everyone. And let's give you guys another trivia question. So remember, write down your answers. How many species of birds are there? How many total species of birds are there? Okay. Now, the next part of your design is to like make these shapes within your peacock feathers. And there again is like no rhyme or reason to this. You are just going to kind of roll with it and do whatever you like. So I am going to put swirls inside of this. And I'm not going to make them um, perfect because I'll do that in my pen. Like sometimes I just hate wasting the time of like getting it exactly. I'm just doing a like quick sketch of where I want each swirl to be. And I'll start them in pencil so that way, you know, like I already think I'll move this one over a little bit, but I can do that with the pen. Like you don't have to um, get it perfectly right with the pencil. The pencil's there to be your like sketchy outline. So I'm just going to keep filling this with little squirrel, swirls, not squirrels. One right in here and then one more right there. There we go. <laughs> Were there drinking words asking for yourself? I didn't set a drinking word. Cheers. You, you drink now when I just tell you cheers. <laughs> You could probably drink with the word feather. Feather would be a good one. Hi, Tammy. I haven't seen you in a bit. 
好き<笑> I'm gonna draw a teardrop inside the teardrop here another one here and some of these shapes like I said even with just the swirls I will elaborate on them when I go through with the pen. So I might add polka dots to the outer edges or stripes inside some of the shapes. Um, I'll kind of make those decisions as I'm working in pen though. I miss you too. I'm gonna do kind of a floral design and then some curved lines all the way down the edge of the feather and then what I'll end up doing in here is I'm going to add like a zigzag Inside one of these, I'll add stripes inside another. Maybe I'll do diagonal lines. So just doing little different shapes inside of those shapes that I've drawn. I'm going to do curved lines and then switch the direction. Curved. So they're just kind of layering off of each other. This one I'm going to keep simple and just do kind of a V shape to divide it up into three pieces. I'm going to do angled lines. And then same thing, switch the direction. So two lines, one direction, two lines, the other, two lines. Not all of the feathers have to have design in them either. Some of them you could just leave empty and then they would just be, you know, whatever color you're adding into. Because that's another thing you get to decide is what colors you're putting inside of your peacock feathers. Feathers, that's definitely our drinking word. So cheers. I'm going to do angled lines here. And let's give you another trivia word or trivia question. Um, what bird can't swivel its eyes to look around and instead uses its head? So what bird can't swivel its eyes and instead uses its head? Write your answers down. I'm gonna do another of these kind of teardrops within teardrops. Just following the shape. Remember, write your answers down, not in the group. I will not answer you. <laughs> And let's do uh, polka dots in this one.
Let's do another striped one. I'm going to do some zigzag in this. I'm going to do another one with the little swirls like I have in the body. Again, I'll make those swirls look a little bit nicer once I have them in pen. I'm just kind of putting the general shape in for now. Do another of these kind of floral ones here. And they don't have to match either. So like, you know, just because this one started like this one did, I don't have to follow this pattern again. I can do new things. So I'm gonna do these kind of curved lines again that are kind of building off of other lines. Oh, I didn't know that, that turkeys were closely related to peacocks. That is not a trivia question either, so that's just a good fun fact. When we were um, on our trip, we went to this um, kind of a wildlife reserve or I don't, I don't really know what they call those, but where they're rescuing, maybe it's called a wildlife rescue, where they're rescuing the animals. Um, and they had peacocks and they had turkeys. And, oh, man, the turkeys were ugly uh their heads and one of them was um you know was full splay of feathers though but and that looks beautiful so I get that they um you know they kind of look like they kind of do that same thing that peacocks do my um in-laws lived in Davis and they had peacock a peacock family that was uh, living in their neighborhood. And they were so loud. And I actually, they had one of those, or had one of those big country mailboxes. And so one year I painted a peacock on the mailbox. Um, and they've... Uh, their houses, um, long gone now, new owners. Um, and my peacock, I went by there not that long ago. My peacock is still on the mailbox. I was so happy. I'm just going to put some little circles in these. I'm also going to do that same pattern in this. So little tiny circles inside these little head feathers. And I can't decide if I like this right now. I liked it in the other drawing. I don't like it so much right now. So I'm making a decision if I'm leaving that shape in or not. <laughs> okay, let's give you another trivia question. Write your answers down. What is the name of the bird in the Peanuts cartoon? So what's the name of the bird in the Peanuts cartoon? So I'm just now going to go over my lines. And you're going to see me making some adjustments as I go in the pen. Um, it's just kind of what I do. I just sometimes 
I'll sit and erase a shape a bunch of times and I don't like doing that. So like I'm cutting the body again here. Sometimes I just wait till I get to the pen and then I make the adjustment that I wanna see. And I am going to put this line here because I do want, I don't want the, you know, beak to be part of the face just because I lined those up. And I'm going to color this eye in, leaving just a little circle of light inside. Oh, good, you got your merch. It's been fun to see people wearing it. So if you did order a shirt and you haven't posted a picture of, you know, yourself or maybe it's your kids in the shirt, I would love to see it, love to see it. And I swear we're still working on some other things that will be available. I draw, but I am not a graphic designer, and there's a big difference in drawing on paper. Oh, I just wiggled that line a lot. And drawing graphically. Yes, we will definitely have stickers. That's actually what we're, that's actually like the main thing I'm working on um, right now is getting some stickers. The stickers will be good because they'll be a really low price point. And, you know, you can, I don't know, you could put it on your car window if you're that kind of person. You could put it on a water bottle. Kids will like it. They can put it on their school folder or something. So we will definitely have stickers. Hopefully at least um, two to three designs of stickers. We're working on two right now, but I have an idea for a third. So you can see as I'm doing these spirals, I'm making them, um, um, you know, I don't know if they're cleaner. They're just more, more spirally than they were in just the pencil. And some of them are moving positions a little bit, becoming bigger or smaller to kind of fill the space. I know, I love stickers too. I've actually purchased a quite a few stickers over quarantine. Um, and I've had some friends send me some. I've been trying a couple friends. We do like happy mail and send each other cards and notes and things like that. Um, I think I might put them. I have a couple on my car. Um, I do put them on the window because you can always just scratch them off. Um, but I think I might put some on my board, like up on my drawing board. Decorated a little bit. <laughs> Because right now I don't, I only have one thing on it. I have um, 
a drawing that was sent to me taped to it. All right, next question, write down your answer. How many gallons of liquid can a pelican hold in its mouth pouch? You know how pelicans have that like mouth, that thing that hangs below their neck? Um, if you've seen Finding Nemo, even the pelican carries Nemo around or Nemo's dad or something in the mouth. But how many gallons of water can they hold? Yes, you can put them on your sketchbooks. That's a brilliant idea. So if you've been keeping, you know, all of your Draw With Stacy art in a certain sketchbook, or even doesn't even have to be Draw With Stacy art, it can be any art. It's a good place to put stickers is on the sketchbooks. That's kind of why I was thinking of putting stickers on my sketchboard. This is probably the most tedious part. It's just all of these little, all of these little designs. Filling all the little spaces. Oh no. <laughs> That's why you need a backup. Need a backup plan. Backup markers. I have lots of backup markers. Mine neither get it, they don't run out too often, these ones that I have, but they um they start to fray on the edges. And I want them, especially when I'm outlining, I want them crisp. Have I heard of pocket letters? I haven't. Cheers, everyone. Take a little hand break. Rotate your wrists. Open and close your fingers. Take a sip. As we keep outlining our feathers. Don't want any hand cramps. It was pretty funny when we took our little road trip because we stayed at a variety of places and um, almost every place we stayed, my son would evaluate whether or not I could have drawn there. So he would go in, he would go, Mom, you could have drawn here. You could set up right here. Or he'd go in and he'd say, Mom, you couldn't have drawn here. The, uh, the internet isn't very good. <laughs> So it was pretty funny, and I kept telling him, well, I'm not drawing on this trip. I'm taking a break. I already did all my drawings. But he would still do it, like each place we went. It's pretty funny. What are pocket letters? Tell me what pocket letters are. I haven't heard of those. The part of the drawing I can't decide to keep is this, the like wood. I'm calling that like the branch that the, um, that the peacock is on. And I drew it in um, the original 
but it's smaller. This one just feels too big. So I either need to cut it and make it a lot smaller or I might just like completely cut it and just have the peacock like floating. That's the part I can't decide. So I'm going to save that till the very end. I have a feeling it's getting cut because I don't really like the way it looks right now. It's weird too drawing on this watercolor paper because it's so rough and I'm so used to just really smooth paper. It's weird the way the, the pen grips it and it's kind of, um, the pencil really smudges on it, which I know all gets erased so it doesn't matter, but sometimes it can be distracting because I'll just see all this smudging on the paper. Use baseball card liners and put small cardstock to fit inside of them. Oh, that's a cool idea. It really does become its own type of doodle page. Um, I've shown a drawing at some point that I did like this um, of a lion, and I'm. It, it's still a work in progress. Like it, instead of a true lion, it has. Um, these kind of shapes within the mane, the lion's mane. Um, and it's not ever going to be colored in. It will just actually all be done in black ink. Uh, and yeah, you can just keep adding for as much as you want. But it's the fun thing of drawings like this or even with doodle pages because there isn't like this super structure with them. You know, you just you have a lot of freedom in um, your design and you can kind of add as much or as little as you want. And I actually am going to color some things in black, like I'm doing these dots. I'm going to color some of the shapes within here too, black. But I'm going to do that after I erase the pencil off. Since they might be bigger shapes and I'm not super comfortable yet on this watercolor paper. Um, so I don't... Uh, I don't want to assume the dry time of the black pen. So I'm going to uh, keep the black coloring to a minimum, to minimum, in, minimum in, until I've erased. God, that was hard to say. Um, what paper do I use for alcohol markers? So, okay, actually, so there's two different things. What I'm... Um, when I'm doing, so tonight I'm doing watercolor markers. Okay, watercolor markers, I really think you have to use watercolor paper. Um, I've had some people tell me that you can use like the multi-purpose paper, like the paper that's supposed to be for all things. I don't think so. I have some and I tried it. It did not work as well. I got much more blending um, with the watercolor paper. 
With alcohol markers, on the other hand, I will use um, that. I'll, I don't, what is it called? I don't know. I even it's what I use for like my normal um, drawings, just like the um, like sketch paper. Uh, the only thing with I can use alcohol markers with this, but it will bleed through so I always make sure I have another piece between or it'll all it's always going to bleed to the next page um you can use watercolor paper for alcohol markers too Sketch paper is like a little thin for alcohol markers. It works. You don't get a lot of bleeding. Um, that's the biggest thing I worry about. I, and now I don't mean bleeding through. You're going to get bleeding through. What I don't like is when you're coloring and you're coloring up against the line and it bleeds outside the line. That's what I mean by bleeding. Um, you're mostly watching for that. Watercolor paper definitely um, helps with that. The one thing with watercolor paper, though, and just alcohol markers or standard markers, the thing I don't like about it is it really, really absorbs because, um, you know, that's it's kind of what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to have a medium that is, like, very wet. Watercolor is very wet. So if you're using alcohol markers on watercolor paper, you can sometimes really blow through your markers really fast because it's just sucking that water or sucking that marker into the paper. So kind of a general all-purpose paper is better because it's not quite as porous, porous and it's not going to have as much absorption. Man, you have two glasses of champagne before you start drawing and words become hard. <laughs> All right, let's see how that looks. I also just definitely find with this watercolor paper, again, it's just the, the smudging. You see so much pencil not necessarily lines, but just places where it really smudges. Yeah, you can, uh, Molly, you can use them, but it's going to really suck your, your alcohol markers in. It just, it'll, it'll dry your markers out fast. You're better off with like a sketch paper or like a, all purpose. I don't I can't think of the name of what that's called. One of you will come up will say it. You always do when I'm forgetful, but there's a paper that's meant for like everything, like drawing, painting, markers, pencil. It's like any medium you're using. Okay. So yeah, I'm not gonna have this little branch. I didn't like it, so I'm just gonna take that off for now. I might add something else in, but I haven't decided yet. Let's give you another mixed media. See, this is why I have you people around. Mixed media, that's your best kind of paper for an alcohol marker. Get yourself some mixed media. It's good for most everything. For craft table, can we have a guess in there? Oh, that's awesome, Catherine. Um, you see that a lot. Um, I mean, you see it with adults too, but uh, kids get really, really critical of themselves when they're creating art. Um, I did a big group drawing yesterday, and so many say, oh, mine is so bad. And then they show it and it isn't bad at all. So 
you just have to encourage them to keep going and that, you know, art is never bad. You know, look at some of the artists whose art is worth tons of money. And you look at it thinking, man, I could do that. <laughs> um, okay, let's give you another trivia question. Again, make sure you write your answers down. Don't put them in the group. Uh, the next question is, what bird lays the biggest eggs? What bird lays the biggest eggs? So write your answers. And I'm just going to get set up here to color. And I'll start in. On my peacock. So when you're coloring your peacock, you can really kind of decide what um, what colors you want to do. You definitely, you know, like greens and blues, but you can also put purples and pinks and yellows and oranges and you kind of have these different, you know, you've done something different here in that you've made them geometric. So you also can make a decision of like, in this feather, do I want to just color this all in one color? Or am I going to color the flower in one shade and this in another shade? You can kind of decide if you actually want to break down colors within your feathers as well. Um, I am definitely, like I said, going to come into some of my shapes and add a black element inside. So I'm doing that now. Just coloring some of these little corners. I'll do it in a couple of them. So I am probably, I'm going to color mine like this feather is going to be a color. This feather is going to be a color. I'm not going to break mine down into multiple colors. So I am probably going to do the um, body, a blue. I'm going to have yellow, blue and green for sure. I'm going to have some yellow blue, green, yellow, and probably a purple. And I might do some variance, variance shades of blue. Um, so I'm probably going to have about six to seven colors myself is what I'd say. Let's see. What else do I want to add a little black to? I think I'm going to do this one. But remember, if you're coloring with um, like colored pencils, you could probably even take three colors and then just push light with some and hard in other places. And then you'll end up with kind of two shades of the same color. So I put some black in that. I'm gonna put some here. I did the dots up there. I don't want to do those dots. I'll do this one here. I'm going to put dots inside of this. And so I did four, three, two, just because I'm crazy. And patterns, I like pattern. I'll put one right here. 
And I think in this one, I'm gonna color this center. And that might be it. I think I want to do these polka dots. And some of this I'm doing because I'm not coloring multiple colors within the feathers. You know, if I was doing multiple colors, then I might color the dots, you know, green and then the outside blue. But I'm, you know, in a in the sense I am coloring multiple colors because I'm coloring the dots black and then doing another color. And because um, because my pre drawing didn't have any color in it, so the sky right here, I will be uploading this to the page as a coloring sheet. So just so you know, this will be uploaded. And I know I keep saying I have a bunch of those to do. I still have a bunch of them to do. And that is on my to-do list for tomorrow since it's a non-drawing day. So cheers, everyone. All right, let's see what I'm doing here. I'm going to use yellow. And again, even though this is an eye and a beak, I'm actually going to color both of these spaces in yellow. And I might come into this eye area and add a little bit of blue or green, but I'm gonna just start with this. That's kind of the fun of the watercolor pens is you can really kind of layer colors on top of each other. So I'm gonna do this blue for the body. Did anyone order these after I used them last time? I do really like them and they were very inexpensive. Have you played, have you used them, Fiona? Do you like them? And I'm coloring with them, and then I'm going to come in with the, uh, I will come in with the actual water pen and go over this a bit just to like blend out some of the lines that I'm gonna end up with. Like you always end up with a line where you picked it up and then started again. And that water pen will help blend that but I'm still learning them too. So I'm not super, super skilled with these yet. <sighs> yeah. 
Yeah, you should try something else, Catherine. The, um, you know, there are art supplies can get really expensive, but there are certain supplies that like these were very inexpensive. Um, there are certain things that really don't cost you a ton. I even think um, the Blick brand colored pencils. Um, you know, I love my Prismacolor colored pencils, but for the day-to-day -day drawing we're doing, I'm still using my Blick pencils. And all you have to do is get yourself a colorless blender and you can get rid of a lot of that line pattern that you're talking about because I know exactly what you're talking about. I even see it here, but I can kind of blend some of it out again with that watercolor marker or the water marker. Sorry, that's what I... Oh, good. Hobby Lobby brand. That's good to know. I haven't tried theirs. Yeah, some knockoff brands are just bleh. But then like, I don't know, Crayola. I really think Crayola's pencils are awful. You can, you can get pencils for so much cheaper than Crayola brand for such better quality. All right, so I have that in. And now I'm going to take this. Oh, I grabbed the wrong thing water pencil and just smudge this around a bit. It's um, the nice thing about the water Part two is you do kind of get a little bit of what you're making, like I'm going to push some of the color out and make kind of a highlight line down the front of the chest. And the nice thing too is when you get things like this, you could go on to YouTube and I'm sure find a million tutorials on tips and tricks for watercolor markers. Do this section a little bit lighter. So I'm just pushing color out. I don't know how much you see that on the, oh yeah, you got, well, I don't know. I'm not looking at the video. Um, Uh, growing a garden, I have um, I have tomatoes and I have chard. That's it. I just have a small little garden box with just those two things. I wanted to do a bigger garden, but we never got. The one time I went to Lowe's thinking I would get all the supplies to do it, Lowe's was just packed and I don't know it was very early into quarantine and I just wasn't ready to like be around that many people so I left I bailed out okay I'm 
going to take a little bit of blue, which will actually look somewhat green because I'm putting it on top of yellow. And I'm just going to come along this front edge. And then instead of the watercolor marker, I'm going to come back in with the yellow and blend the line and kind of ombre that green in. So see how it does that? It like ombres. So that's where you end up with these like cool effects with these watercolor markers. And it doesn't have to be done with the water pen. Like it can be done with just the pens themselves by kind of blending them together. Let's do another trivia. So write your answer down. Um, and your next question is, how many mates, how many partners do flamingos have in their lifetime? How many partners do flamingos have? Yeah, this would look um, really cool to doing kind of an ombre within all the feathers. But if we did that, oops, sorry. I keep hitting the camera. We'll be here all night. <laughs> just realized we've already been drawing for an hour over an hour now I'm going to put this color in multiple feathers I'm probably just going to do about three or four colors down here One, two. I was also very pleased when I realized that um, these watercolor pens didn't bleed the black pen. Um, I've even bought alcohol markers um, before to try them out and you start coloring and it bleeds all of your black lines. So it's always nice when it doesn't do that. Let's do that one. And maybe this guy right here. And if you decide to do, you know, kind of solid, well, if you're working in these pens, if you decide to do solid colors in your feathers and then you change your mind and you want to layer, you can do that. Like I could go back with another color and like go inside here to create something just kind of like I did up here with that ombre. Oh, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to color every other one. color I 
can. Let's do... Pale blue in this. So when we were at this um, wildlife place, I, uh, you know, I said the peacocks and they had turkeys, they had um, emus, which are kind of fun. I mean, I don't know. Birds maybe a little bit scare me, I guess. Um, I mean, they're kind of cool looking and then they're kind of ugly also. Um, but then they had an ostrich. Oh my gosh. Like, I don't actually think I've ever, even at the zoo, I don't think I've seen an ostrich that close. Talk about a scary bird. I mean, that bird looks like it would just beat you up if it wanted to. And it has the most prehistoric looking feet and like nail. Oh, it is just a crazy animal. And you're looking at it thinking, it's a bird? It literally looks like dinosaur age. I don't know. It was wild. Oh, your husband's been bitten by an ostrich. No, thank you. I seriously was frightened by the ostrich. I mean, it wasn't close enough at all to, like, get to us, but, man, they are horrifying looking. They're just very large. I mean, I don't think I realized how large they can be. That's all I'm going to do with that one. You fed ostriches at an ostrich farm in Solvang. Whew. You are brave. <laughs> I mean, I would do it, I guess, if I was at an ostrich farm. I would do it. But boy, do they look scary. They're just so prehistoric. And their wings, like their wings look like they weigh about a million pounds. They have so many feathers on those wings. How would I put another color over which blue? This blue, this blue, this blue? Like, because of the pens I'm using, so let's just say I wanted to do this area darker. You can't put, well, you can put a lighter color and it's going to blend into, you know, a new color. So if I put yellow on the top of this, it's going to look more green. Um, So see that, I'll do it again here. 
with these pens, you can just keep layering. But if you're layering in a different color family, you can end up like with what we did here. I put um, a blue on there, but it came out green. Um, the only way to really do a lighter color and have it show a ton would be to actually like come in with your water pencil and like light or water pen and lighten the space a little bit by adding some water in there. But see, that's not lightening it too much on that color anyway. If I keep going over it, it will. So I'm wiping color out and then I'm literally wiping it on my leg. You have to wipe it onto something. But yeah, with these pens, I mean, you can, if I wanted to color the circles, so if I want, like these, if I wanted to color these circles, I wouldn't have colored them in black. Um, are you using these pens? Can I ask you that too? Because see, like with these pens, if I if I come in and I start putting this yellow in here, you're going to see it. But it could end up looking green. Because I'm putting yellow on top of blue. These watercolor pens seem to be pretty good about color depositing on top of even shades that are darker than the shade you're using. Now we're just going to make all these spirals yellow because I started doing it. And even alcohol markers, I find, don't, um, don't go on the top as well as these with uh, a real contrasting color. Yeah, see, different brand of pen, pens, it's completely different. Um, like if I was using an alcohol marker right now and I was putting yellow on top of this light blue, I'm not sure how efficiently it would show up. The thing with these watercolor pens is they are water-based. So when I'm depositing the color, there's enough water in it that it's almost diluting the color below it. That doesn't necessarily happen in like an alcohol marker or a um, different kind of pen. You kind of just have to play with them and see what happens. That's okay. Don't be sorry. Kind of had a little fun there adding some other colors in. Let's put our yellow in here. how it's coming out um let's do another question for you another trivia question remember write your answers down um what does the word parakeet mean the word parakeet means it has a definition 
What does the word parakeet mean? Trying to just blend this a little bit better. Two Keats. <laughs> like the best dad joke ever, Rosie. both of these little guys in purple. I'm using more colors than I thought I would. Let's get, I'm gonna do kind of a pink, kind of a fuchsia. look. I think if I did this again, I would definitely do ombre in the feathers. I kind of like that look. I might even do a little bit more coloring on this tomorrow. We have two more trivia questions. So you should have eight answers by now. We have two more to go. Or eight, yeah, you should have written down eight answers. I'll give you the actual answers here shortly. All right, let's... Give ourselves a cheers and take a little handbrake. I've reached the gummy bear portion of my bubbly. Just gonna pick one more color to do those last two. It's actually really good. I really like putting, um, well, typically I put pieces of fruit inside of wine. I'll just like float grapes or blueberries. 
I like to eat them afterwards, but I happen to have gummy bears left from my road trip, so. I call it dessert. <laughs> Okay, next question. There are two acceptable answers for this one. Write your answers down. Don't call them out into group. What is a group of crows called? What is a group of crows called? There's actually two different answers for this. I'll accept either one of them. So write down your answer. What is a group of crows called? Come in with a light green here. And I'm going to put this same light green up in the couple of little feathers I have left up at the top of the head. Now I'm just adding color inside. Even though I said I was doing them one color, but. Last trivia question and then I'll give you guys the answers. Write down your answer. This is your last question. So what, remember, write down your answers, write them down. Don't announce them in group because then you're giving the answer to everybody else. We're going to see how many people get right at the end. So write your answers down. So last question. What year was Big Bird born? What year was Big Bird born? All right, you should have 10 answers now to the questions. So we had, um, don't, don't call out your answers yet. Uh, what species of bird has a bill longer than its body? That was question one. How many species of birds are there? That was question two. What bird can't swivel its eyes to look around and instead uses its head? That was number three. What was the name of the bird in the peanuts? That was number four. Number five was how many gallons of liquid can a pelican hold? Then we had what bird lays the biggest eggs? Then we had how many mates do flamingos have? Then we had what does the parakeet mean? What does the word parakeet mean? Then um, we had what is a group of crows called? And finally it was what year was big bird born? So write all your answers down. I'm going to give you them. I'm going to flip the camera around, actually, and give them to you in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and do my little initials. And it is August. Whew. Write that date in the corner. 
there's my peacock. I'll probably do a little bit more coloring in there, add a couple little things. I kind of ended up liking like the layering, so I'm gonna go through and do that a little bit more. Um, let me flip you around and I'll give you the answers. Turn off this light though. Whew. It gets hot underneath that light. Okay, question number one. You guys ready for the answers? What species of bird has a bill longer than its body? The answer is a hummingbird. There is a hummingbird that's bill is longer than its body. So hummingbird is your answer. Number two, how many species of birds are there? There are over 9,500 species of birds. So if you said anything 9,500 or over, give yourself a point. I mean, unless you said 20,000, then maybe give yourself 0.5. <laughs> so um, hummingbird and then over 9,500. What bird can't swivel its eyes and has to use its head? An owl. Everyone should have got that. What was the name of the bird in the peanuts? It was Woodstock. I feel like everyone should have gotten that too. A million. Catherine, you can't have a point for a million. If anyone said over 10,000, you can't have an, a point. You have to answer between 9,500 and 10,000. That's my new rule. Because <laughs> if it was over 10,000, they would have said over 10,000, right? So it's got to be between 9,500 and 10,000. Okay. <laughs> How many gallons of liquid, liquid can a pelican hold? A pelican can hold 2.5 gallons. 2.5 gallons. It said up to. I'm sure there's pelicans that only hold one, but we're going with the answer 2.5. What bird lays the biggest eggs? Of course, based on our conversation, it is the ostrich. Did you know that ostriches can be over nine feet tall? Some scary birds. We've also moved to the water portion of the night. How many mates do flamingos have? How many mates? Flamingos mate for life. They have one. It said some flamingos are with their partner for 50 years. God bless those flamingos. What does the word parakeet mean? Well, <laughs> it's not pair of keats. So Rosie, you don't get a point if that was your answer. The word parakeet means long tail. That is what parakeet means. I don't even think parakeets have very long tails, do they? I don't really know birds very well. Okay, a group of crows is called a murder or a congress. You could answer either one, a murder or a congress. Crows are quite honestly probably the bird I'm most afraid of. Um, they remember faces. They are scary. They come after you. They partner up. They, if you've done them wrong, they know for life. And they remember your face. Literally, a crow can remember your face. So murder or Congress. Lastly, what year was Big Bird born? He was born in 1969. So Big Bird was born in 1969. If you said March, you get a bonus point because he was born in March of 1969. That was his birthday. There you go. How'd you guys do? Let me see your... Let me... <laughs> That's a joke. It wasn't a joke. It said murder or Congress. Um, so let me write, write out. Tell me how many you got right. Oh, Linda has eight. That was strong. Five. Does anyone have more than eight? Um, is 
one still looking for me. There is there is a story. Oh, we have lots of eights. Okay, so who are eights? Judy, Fiona, and Linda. Judy, Fiona, and Linda. Let me write that down. I'll come up with a tiebreaker. Okay, here's my crow story. My husband and I were sleeping one night. It was like middle of the night. I was probably 25 maybe. And we woke, it was pitch black out, and we woke to like this horrific sound. Just horrific. Like, you know a crow, like, ah, ah, ah. But it was like that times a million. We're like, what is going on? I went out front and I had, we had a tree right outside of our bedroom window. And that tree, no lie, there were probably a hundred crows and they were just bouncing from branch to branch to branch to branch. Like this whole tree just looked like it was moving. And there were crows flying over the top and they were just all screaming. And there was this cat just hiding underneath a bush by our bedroom window. So this cat probably killed one of the crows and that crow got all of its friends. <laughs> And it was the scariest thing I've ever seen. I had no idea they did that. So I was like, I've been petrified ever since of crows. Okay. I will see if it, our three people, Judy, Fiona, and Linda, you're the only three who can answer this. We'll see. Yeah, this is like far-fetched, but we'll see if you anybody gets this right. I'm not a bird fan. I mean, they're fine, but you know, I'm not buying any for myself. However, there is one bird I have always loved and I almost got one at one point. What kind of bird do you think it was? Let's see if any of you guess. I mean, you know, now you know it's domesticated because people buy it. I could have bought it at any random pet store. So it's that domesticated. I wouldn't have had to go to a special bird store, but I have, there's one bird. Nope, Linda's not right. That's our first guess. Judy and Fiona, do you have a guess? I'm waiting. Well, it was not a canary. Oh, you all got it wrong. Well, God damn it. <laughs> the answer would have been, <laughs> yeah, the answer was a crow. No, um, it was a lovebird. I did really want a lovebird at one point. Um, let's see, what else could I ask you? How many, here we go, without looking, how many sip and draws have we done? How many sip and draws have we done since Draw with Stacy started? Let's see if you get this. So today I added the sip and draw tag and it gives me like a count of how many there were. So if you guess how many there are or how many there were before today. Can you count your sad? Oh, Fiona, you're the winner. First one, 25. You got it. 25 sip and draws. And 26 today. Good job, Fiona. Okay, Fiona's our winner. So Fiona, you were the first to answer 25, and then you came in with 26. You had both versions right. So you are the winner, Fiona. I will message you after this to get your address from you. 
So thank you everyone. Tonight was awesome. I miss you guys when I go on vacation. Um, it's always nice to come back to such a big group of you. There were a lot of you tonight, over 30 at one point. Um, remember these are free. I am asking for a suggested $5 donation now for them. So um, please donate your $5. It helps me out. Um, I'll post the link for that if you don't know what it is, or you can go to draw with Stacy. Um, yeah, we've done a ton of drawings, guys. Like the, um, I'm trying to think the weekday drawings. There are 89, I think, now. So like 89 plus the 26, that's a lot of drawings. The theme for next week, oh, there you go, Dwayne. Dwayne just posted where you can leave your $5 tip. Some of you are paying for like the month, like you're sending like 25, like you're cool. And I'm not keeping track. So I'm never gonna be like, um, Julie, where's your $5? If there's a Julie here, I'm sorry. I just gave a name at random, but I'm not gonna come after you. Um, or am I? No, anyway. What was I going to say? The theme, <laughs> the theme for next week is going to be Disney. So it's uh, all Disney next week on the weekdays. Um, there are, but but the sip and draw is the pairs. So come, um, so for the pair, for Saturday we're doing the pair sip and draw, partnered up with Hemley. Get your orders in for the cider. It's tasty. There's a coupon code for 10% off. Um, yes, the crows. I will send the crows for you if you don't pay your $5. <laughs> I'm like the kid in Better Off Dead, like, I want my $5. Do you guys know that movie? I hope so. If not, your project tomorrow is watch Better Off Dead. That's it. I love you. I will see you Monday. Disney all week. Thank you very much. Happy drawing. Have a lovely evening. Don't make me send my crows. I can't stop the video. <laughs>